Tinana taku waka, ko tu moana te tangata, ko ngā te tautahi me ngā te whakaeke o kuhapau, ko te kotahi tangata ku marae, ko ngā pui te iwi. I was at work at, at River Ridge and I'd see all these women walking upstairs to antenatal classes and I would think, where are all these Māori women? And my boss said, Māori women don't attend antenatal education. So I said, what do I have to do to be able to facilitate or to teach? And she said, you need to go and get a Diploma of Childbirth Education. It's beautiful to have everyone here and for you guys to share your pregnancies with me and, and with Ra and to come and gain lots of knowledge and lots of information. And for the support people, I'll get you on your game so they won't, you won't be the stud mullet in the corner, okay? We'll get you organised so you'll know what you're doing and you'll feel confident. I fell pregnant with my first baby very soon after I met my partner and um, I didn't know until I was over 20 weeks that you had a midwife. I thought you'd just go to the doctor and someone looks after you. So I found, I found a... Um, a Māori midwife actually, her name's Mary Cruskery, and Mary was amazing and she educated me and she shared with me and um, I had this beautiful water birth. My fifth baby though, there was an induction of labour because I had um, high blood pressure and I handed over the power to the people who were looking after me. Um, it took me a long time after, after my fifth baby was born to sort of um, trust the system again. I became a midwife because I was young when I got hapu with my firstborn, he's 12 now, I was 18 um, and I found it really difficult to find a Māori practitioner and I wanted to fill that need. I had done a lot of research about what had been happening in New Zealand or what was already evolved in New Zealand around this space. I learned a lot about the Tohunga Suppression Act and the um, Midwives Registration Act and how it actually took the, the normality of living for Māori and birthing um, for Māori um, away from us. If you were a tāpuhi and you weren't a registered qualified midwife, it was a law, so you would be fined or there were other implications to that. So the loss of Tapuitanga um, was huge and impacted Māori communities in such a way that we handed over our mana to the system. We're looking into history to talk about why we're in the current positions we're all in today. If you have understanding for that, then there shouldn't there shouldn't be um, yeah the want not to improve health and all sorts of stats for everybody. If you look at statistics over Aotearoa, um, that's very low for Māori engagement in mainstream international education. It was a huge need for these women to be able to hear information in a culturally safe space, to have wide discussion and they come back and I felt that, yeah, they were truly talking about what them and their whānau wanted for their experience in their birth. We want to talk about mana wahine and our rights. Our rights as women, our rights to birth in these different facilities and in, in the system. My body, my baby, my birth, that was something that kept going through my mind when I was having baby and I guess that's what kept me focused on my job or my task at that moment. Me tara tai tino aki aki a hau ki te tai mai ki tēnei wānanga um, ngā rangi erua, kia ako i ngā ahuatanga rereke, ngā tirohanga rereke o te whānau pepi. They learn the tikanga around birthing and they walk away a lot stronger and they have these beautiful births. See a lot of times when one will come to hapu and they're petrified, they've got a lot of anxiety around giving birth and when they walk out they're like, bring it on. I've heard all the horror stories. <laughs> So I'm expecting all of that, but no one really talks about the goods like, you know, the empowerment side of it or the beautiful side of it. Being empowered by what I've learnt today, yeah, it just reaffirms and reassures me that that's what I need to do. 
they will contact me and they're like, Cal, I did it, thank you so much. I said, you don't have to thank me, sister. This is you, you've done it, it was always there. That kaha was always inside you, it just took something to bring it out of you. But I think what Hapu Wananga provided for me and my wife was that belonging in that sense of, okay, we can relax and we can learn. Having a tani or a father um, be in a space that where he feels, feels uncomfortable initially and walk away um, feeling strong and powerful, he'll be able to support that mama. And if a woman is supported and if she has that foundation of aroha, that baby's going to be fine. So it's all about whānau order. It's not just about the mother and the baby. For our papas, it is the most empowering thing for you to be the first hands on your baby's head. You know, when my daughter did come into the world, you know, there was an atmosphere shift. Like, it's sort of that feeling like when someone um, dies, eh? Like, it's just new life was coming into the world, and it was like this moment where you could hear a pin drop, and, and that was quite an amazing thing to be witness to. We um, used muka to tie off the, the cord and to, the ponamu to cut it. I, I took my daughter in my hands and I chanted a karakia. You know, ki ngā hauwe whā, you know, ane taku kōtiro, ko tai mai nei ki te ao ki kiko nei, te ao mārama, ane te taonga. Incorporating all of those traditions um, enables women to re-own um, that mana. I feel intergenerationally, especially with our fantastic Māori midwives out there as well, that this education that we share with women, they have these positive birthing experiences, it'll pass on to their children and their children. And if you have a flow and effect with Hapu Wānanga, the way Kelly's now providing um, postnatal Wānangas, um, this only furthers the education and furthers the outreach. And the idea in this engagement is that you're affecting hapu, then iwi, then aotearoa. Every thousand babies that are born in aotearoa, four of those babies will die of CD. Three of those four are Māori babies. So with more education, more um, safe safe devices being distributed out into the community, those um, CD numbers will decline. We also have Wahakura program as well, so different weavers from different um, hapu throughout uh, Waikato, and those Wahakura will go to women in those regions. I try and work from my heart, and I try and ensure that what I do is, is tika, and if I'm not sure about something, I'll always get advice from a queer. And those women who, who stepped out of the square who were challenged by the system who, and who kept on going have created this pathway and I'm just grateful that I'm able to come through and support them and see more and more women that are educated in this space so they can make their own choices and their birthing experience. Kadui taku aroha, kei taku hei mapunai, kei taku hei piri piri, kei taku kati taramea, kei taku piki kotuku, kei taku kulpau namu, kei taku hei mapi, nana wea na te aroha ya hau. Yeah, quick, it took a